Hi, my loves. Don't mind me. I was trying to show y'all this thing that I was excited to get from the Tiki Top. Oh, I got it. But I couldn't get my big ass head inside the shit. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Okay. Am I the asshole for cutting off my adult children and telling them that they'll lose their inheritance next if they don't stop attacking my wife? I'm a 56-year-old widower. No. No, you're not the asshole. My children's mother, Claire, passed away 15 years ago. No. You're not the asshole. Mm -mm. We have been together since middle school. I've never been with another woman, obviously. I dove, I dove into my children and my work. I finished raising two great kids with the help from my parents, from her parents and as well as my sister and her husband. With my wife's life insurance money and the mortgage insurance, I had more money than I would ever need. I made sure my kids graduated from college with no debt. I also bought each of them an apartment near where they went to school where they could live and make some money off renting the spare rooms to their friends. My daughter still has hers and she rents it out every year to kids going to that school. My son sold his and made enough money to buy the house that he and his family live in now. Five years ago, I met the woman that I'm married to now, Maggie. She was a single mother with two young kids. She was 32 and her kids were five and seven. So the issue is the age difference. She's a grown ass woman. There is no issue in the age difference. She's a grown ass woman. She was 32 when her kids were five and seven. She was a front desk clerk at a hotel where I stayed in, where, where I stayed for work for 11 months. We talked all the time and we just clicked. When my job was coming to an end, she asked me out. I was flattered that such a pretty young woman would be interested in me. We had a nice date and, she start, and I started traveling to go and see her. One year later, we got married and she moved into my home. It was the house that I bought for myself after I sold my, fam my family's home because I couldn't be there without Claire. My kids had graduated and were living in different cities when I sold the house. Bro, you're not the asshole. I'm not seeing, <laughs> I'm not seeing where he could possibly be. The, old, the new wife was, is, was 32 when they, when they met. Yes, 32 when they met. And he was... How old was he? 51. So, yeah. He's done absolutely nothing to be the asshole. My children don't approve of Maggie. They think she's too young and that she's just with me for my money. Of course. Of course they do. They know that I paid for her to go to school full time and finish her degree. She had been taking classes part time when we met. I, met, I became a stay at home dad when I wasn't working and I paid for child care when I was away. Maggie is currently working as a teacher. They also think that it's gross that an old man is using up her time and that she'll have to take care of me when I get old and feeble. My dad is still going strong at 80. Well, that says a lot about what your kids think of you. <laughs> That's already, already telling you while you plan to leave stuff to your kids, they don't plan to help you out when you get old and feeble in their words. They don't plan to help you out. She's just going to be stuck taking care of you when you get old. Okay, bitch, I got a son and a daughter. Y'all wasn't going to plan to come and help, like, at all? I mean, not a little bit. You ain't going to clip my toenails. You're not going to come and change the linens on the bed? Like, nothing? Okay, sir. So when we cutting them off? Did we cut them off already? Did we cut? Because I didn't, didn't he say, yeah, the title said he was telling that they inheritance. I hope we cut them off because fuck them. His dad is still going strong at 80. Go on, Pops. Go on in, Pops. Yeah, we got to cut them off. This ain't even my money. And we're, sign the paper. Give me the paper so I can sign the paper. It's not even my money. But I want to sign the paper so we can make... Is it, is it a paper? I don't, I don't have rich people money, so I don't know how that shit work. Like... But the thing is, the dad didn't end up with a lot of money until the mom passed away. So it's not like... In the beginning, they did not grow up like this. They didn't grow up like this. And they truly feel like dad's marrying a younger woman. She's going to take all his money. and There's going to be nothing left for us. That's all. They're, they're just literally only thinking about themselves. They're only thinking about themselves and they're hiding behind the she's a gold digger type shit. Like, no. No. Disrespectful. 
I told my kids to mind their business and let us be happy. They won't. They started saying some very rude things and skipping out on visiting me. They started telling my grandchildren that they shouldn't be friends with my stepkids. When we came to see them this last Christmas, my grandchildren said some things that I'm not going to repeat, but I could tell they were saying things that my kids had said. We left the gifts that we bought and we just came home. I talked to my wife and I told her that I was sorry for my children's behavior and that I don't think she's a gold digger. I would, yeah, 100% would just go on and cut ties because your kid's grown as fuck. They know better. They know better. They're grown as shit. Like at some point, you gotta, you gotta step back. <laughs> they're my kids and they're grown as fuck and they know better. If you know that you raised them to be better and they're acting like this and you're telling them, telling them that you don't like the way that they're acting yet they're not listening to you, it's time to let them loose. Because ain't no way in hell my kid's going to talk down to my significant other and I'm going to just stand on they're my kids. Nah, because my motherfucking kids would never. My babies would never. I don't know what the fuck is going on here, but my babies would never. My kids would never do this to someone that they know makes me happy. Someone that they know I love and loves me just as much. This person has never done anything disrespectful, out of line, or even suspicious for them to treat her this way. And they're being so nasty to her. Like dad's happiness isn't a thing. Dad can't be happy. That's fucking terrible. Nah, hell no. <laughs> They're my kids would be the first reason that they got to go. Because you're my fucking kids. And the way that you are doing my significant other breaks my heart. They, uh, mm -mm. <laughs> but, yeah, no, that's terrible. I was sick of their disrespect for myself and for Maggie. I stopped helping them with extra money. They're both debt free to the best of my knowledge. And they both have good careers. I just tend to do things like upgrade their, va their vacations and bigger purchases. For example, when my daughter bought her last car, I threw in $20,000 to make sure she got all the bells and whistles without having a huge car note. And yeah, thank you. And they are treating this man like this. She bought a car. He paid an extra 20 grand to make sure it was fully loaded. The disrespect. And every time I ask my daddy for money, he want to give me $40 like I'm 12. Let my daddy peel me off 20 stacks. All right. The way I don't give a hit. I don't give a damn who he with. Are you happy? Did you sign a prenup? I'm happy, daddy. I, I love her. She look a little funny, but she make you happy. And that's great. Yeah. So rent is due in a couple weeks, dad. Are you still going to be able to help? Yeah. Oh, you already did it. I didn't even. Oh, I got the note. I didn't even pay attention. Okay. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> like the way as long as my dad took care of himself as long as my daddy took care of himself did you get a prenup okay it's not my business are you still gonna help me pay my rent this month that's all that's my business I got questions and I demand answers and as, as long as I'm satisfied with those answers the rest of the shit that's not my business is not a question I'm just I'm worried about it because <laughs> mm -mm, your money is not my issue <laughs> it's not the issue becomes when I stop getting it and I'm not going to step a toe out of line to cut all of that allowance off I'm not I'm not <laughs> I'm not gonna do it mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. my son took his took his family to Disney World I paid for them to have a private tour guide so the kids could go on all the rides without having to wait in line for hours in the Florida heat both of them have called to ask for help since Christmas I said no both times just after Valentine's Day, they came for a visit, just the two of them. They asked to meet me without my wife present. I agreed and we had lunch. They said that they're worried Maggie is using undue influence to control me and my money. So they learned to Google. <sighs> Between Christmas and Valentine's Day, they learned to Google. Okay. I told them that I'm not a senile old man. I have a prenup and I've done some things like set up an education account for my for my stepkids that used up a bunch of the money that I hadn't planned on spending. I also adopted the kids. Before I did that, I also got a lawyer to get all the child support that Maggie was owed by her ex. 
He agreed to let me adopt the kids once he figured out he would be off the hook for any further child support. He hadn't bothered seeing them in the three years prior to me meeting Maggie. Hmm. I told him that since they couldn't respect me, I was subsidizing their lives. I said that my mom and dad were unlikely to leave me anything when they passed away and that they should expect the same thing. They kind of stared at me in shock and I asked them why would, damn, I asked them why they thought they deserved any of the money I've worked for if they can't treat me with respect. I said that I didn't expect them to treat Maggie as a mother figure since she's only a few years older than them, but that they should have still treated her kindly. So maybe he did have, they did have money before mom passed away. He just said that he had more money than he would ever need after her, after she passed away. Okay, 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 okay. When lunch was over, I paid for only my share of the bill and I left. Both of them have called me to say that I was being an asshole trying to control them with my money. I said that I didn't ask them to change their behavior. I was just done tolerating it. We love a king with boundaries. I love it. And I love the way he he phrased that. I didn't ask you to change your behavior. I'm just done tolerating it. I like that. I'm going to use that. You go OP. I like that. I like that a lot. My son is holding steady with his feelings, and I have no problem with that. He can feel however he wants to. I only have a problem with his behavior. My daughter has called me to apologize and say that she would like a check in, a check in chance. A second chance to get to know Maggie and her siblings. <laughs> <laughs> to get to know Maggie and her new siblings. We're going to get together in Mexico this summer when Maggie and all the kids are out of school. My daughter and her husband are paying for their own flights and everything. I'm letting them stay at the guest suite in the condo complex where I have my vacation home. He's definitely not the asshole. And I do like the fact that his daughter has seen the error of her ways, but it could have possibly just been strongly influenced by her brother. You know, like, we don't really know what the whole story is that way. I mean, right there, like, that situation. We don't know what the complete story is for that. But I do like the fact that she's willing to apologize and take a chance to get to know this woman. She's got a lot of ass kissing to do. A lot of ass kissing to do. Because you've disrespected me so many fucking times without bothering to know me. So don't think an apology is going to make me just run to you with open arms. Now I'm willing to give you a chance. But 50 feet, bitch. 50 feet it could have been influenced by money but we don't know we don't know we don't know because she could have just apologized and not bothered to say anything else she, she didn't have to say any more comments but the fact that she's willing to try to get to know her it could have been influenced by something else am i the asshole for refusing to host any more nope okay wait i'm a, i'm sorry i'm sorry Am I the asshole for refusing to host any more family get togethers at our house because I hate hosting my in-laws and their poor manners? Nope. You're never the, they're never the asshole for refusing to host anything because hosting some shit is a lot of work. Like, hosting is hard fucking work. Mm -mm, nope. You and your ill-mannered ass kids and your disgusting husband and all the rest and the rest of the group. Nope. Nope. Y'all can't come. My husband and I finally bought our first house. Five bedroom, three bathrooms a year ago. Over the holidays, we thought we would take on the role of hosting a few get togethers. From my perspective, it was hell. <laughs> I hated every second of it. I never really hosted anything or entertained or whatever you call it. Maybe it's just that I'm not used to the requirements, but growing up, mom or dad, my mom or dad would host family and they were nothing like this. My in-laws allowed things like this. Y'all ready for this damn list? They let the kids run around screaming and yelling, up and down the stairs, touching things that don't belong to them, making messes and, make, and not making them clean up after themselves. The parents didn't bring any, anything for the kids to do and got pissy with us for not having anything for them. These your ugly ass kids brought a dog into our house and left the dog on the furniture. Oh, hell no. Left chairs sticking out of tables, counters, instead of pushing them in. 
stomped around the house with their shoes on despite being asked to remove them, left trash and paper plates sitting around or balled up instead of putting it in the trash, opened multiple cans and bottles of drinks only to take a sip and leave it open. Ah, hell no. Pulled out and used new rolls of toilet paper when there was still plenty left on the rolls, opened the medicine cabinets. Only one person asked if we needed help at any point, and it was my husband's brother's new girlfriend who we were all meeting for the first time. She offered to help us clean up and bring out food, things like that. <laughs> Excuse me, that's terrible. Girl, nah. -uh. Y'all would have left Christmas Eve. Y'all would have left Christmas Eve fucking with me. Mm -mm, because I'm going to say something the day before. And if nobody's complying, y'all can leave. <laughs> y'all can leave. This was a terrible experience. My husband was shocked at his family's behavior and didn't know what to say. I don't blame this, blame him for this at all. He was just a part of hosting as like, damn, like I was. But he was seeing his family through new eyes as well. When he talked to his mom and dad after, they just laughed at us and said, that's what hosting is. Okay, so we're not doing it no more. So we decided together we would rather not go through all of that again. Easter is coming up and my in-laws asked what our plans are. My husband said that we aren't going to host after everyone's awful manners. His mom and dad are upset with us. We have the big house. So they figured it would be on us from now on. We said that the only way we would ever even consider hosting is if every member of his family pitched in in some way. They said that defeats the purpose of someone else hosting. No, bitch. That just because you guys are staying in my house does not mean you come and you act like you were raised in the fucking wilderness. No, that defeats the purpose. Cleaning up after yourself is defeats the purpose of having someone hosting it. Like, get the fuck. Okay. That's why y'all that's why y'all don't have a host. That's why y'all don't have a host because you're taking advantage and you're being like disgusting on purpose. That's terrible. I don't like that at all. She they said that de that defeats the purpose of someone else someone else hosting and that no one should be expected to pitch in if we offer to host. So we said we won't host. Okay, well, we're not offering. You guys are asking to come to our house. So when you ask to come to my house, y'all got to clean up after yourself. Because you said that's the purpose of someone else offering to host. We didn't offer. So what you gonna do now? I don't go to nobody's house, first of all. <laughs> I don't go to other people's house, first of all. Second of all, if I did go to someone else's house, you're literally gonna have to tell me to stop doing stuff because I don't wanna leave any trace that I was here. I'm trying like I'm talking clean out the shower and the bathtub before we leave because I washed my behind in your tub. Like I'm not trying to leave any type of trace that I was here in your house. Like can when I get up in the morning, you want me to put these sheets and pillowcases in the washing machine? I mean, I already stripped the bed. Yeah, they folded up at the. I could just go. And, no, you all right? <laughs> like I'm like I'm trying to just. I was not here. I wasn't here because the. I hate when people leave and like you. All right, y'all. Yeah, thank you. Y'all drive safe. All right, I love you. And you close the door and it's like. And then you turn around and your house looked like it was motherfucking people in it. And it's like, oh, God, even though it's clean, you can tell it was other people in the house. It's like. Now I got a I got four fucking paper towels on a roll. Like we went through three rolls of toilet paper this weekend. All them butts and everybody was eating the toilet paper. Like <laughs> that's me. That's me. <laughs> but after people leave, I'd be so irritated because it smell like other people. Yeah, man, get out. Y'all can't. No, mm -mm. Y'all can't stay here. OK. We said that we're no longer going to host. Maybe I'm just not meant to be a host, but we truly are so far out of bounds to refuse to host. Damn. But are we truly so far out of bounds to refuse to host anymore because of how his family behaves? I truly like if you want to be able to invite to be invited back to someone's house, you need to give them a reason to invite you back. Why would I want you to come back to my house when you 
treated me like I was a built-in fucking maid. Why would I want you to go back to my house after you trashed it and couldn't even do the simple thing as take off your fucking shoes while you in my house? Why would I want you to come back? Why do you think I would want you to come back? That's crazy. It's crazy. The brother-in-law's girlfriend was the only one that took the initiative to even see if they need any help. She could come back. You're right. She could come back anytime. Girl, what you doing this weekend? You trying to come back? Don't tell nobody, though. Your boyfriend can't even come, bitch, because he didn't help. But you could come back. <laughs> Am I the asshole for making my future in-laws uncomfortable by talking more openly about my adoption and my parents? No. I'm trying to think of how this could be a negative. Talking openly about your adoption and your parents. Your parent, your in law, your future in laws are those kinds of people. You know, y'all know the people, the America people. You know, y'all know the people. There, uh, how much y'all want to bet? How much y'all want to bet? They're those kind of people. Y'all know the America people. So I, twenty five male, am engaged to my fiance Aaron, twenty five female. Since we started actively plan damn, actively planning our wedding, Erin's family, but mostly her parents, have developed an obsession with stating how tragic, sad, and unfortunate it is that I won't have my real family there and that there'll be no blood relatives of mine present for the wedding for the wedding or our life together. What I say? What I say? Merka. Aaron has told them my real family are my dads. That's the problem. OP's got two dads. The Murica people. What, what the fuck did I say? Aaron has told them my real family are my dads and my siblings, but they wave that off like it's BS. Aaron has told them how the topic is to be closed and we've left on a couple of occasions because they've brought it up since. But this last time, I've decided to be open. It was a dinner where Aaron's immediate family was present and some family friends. Aaron's parents brought it up again how tragic it is, so I decided to divulge my feelings and my experience with adoption and my parents. Background. I was removed from my biological parents at the age of five and placed in foster care. I had a very unstable two years before I met my dad and my pa. I was seven when I moved in with them, nine when I became eligible for adoption, and that same year, I welcomed the first of my two siblings. I was so lucky to find my parents and to end up with the family that I have. I remember clearly some of the bad with my biological family. I don't miss that. That's so sweet. Okay, it made me cry. So I told my future in-laws that I didn't find it tragic at all. <clears throat> that people who can make a five-year-old feel so unloved that they can never see a future where someone could ever care for them. That you can be surrounded by those who share your DNA and never experience kindness or love. I told them I couldn't imagine having any of those people in my life today. And I couldn't imagine thinking DNA means more than love. I told them I was miserable being with those people. And I wished every day for someone to love me. And that I didn't know love until I was seven and I met my parents. And more specifically, my dad who embodies love and is hands down the most loving, caring, compassionate, and thoughtful person I've ever met. Oh my gosh. I love love so much and this love is about to make me cry. Oh my gosh. He's my shining example of someone who loves and has, a such, has such a deep capacity to love. I told them my real parents are the dad and pa who took in a kid who was so depressed and scared. What? Oh, who was so depressed and scared and dragged down that he didn't eat like a normal person. He was afraid to sleep and would often cry when sleep did overtake him. I told him that my real parents are the people who walked me to school every morning, who sat and helped me catch up with school and homework because I was so far behind that I should have been back in kindergarten. I told them my real family are the parents and siblings who know I don't share their DNA, but they love me anyway. 
They've been there for me through every single step of my life since I was seven and who made me a forever part of their family through adoption. My future in-laws were silent after that, but they told me I humiliated them and made them uncomfortable in their own home and that I shouldn't have spoken like that. Not them acting like he cussed them out. <laughs> Not them acting like he cursed at them. Aaron told them they should learn when to quit and to apologize to me. Am I the asshole? Absolutely not, babe. Absolutely not. And I love the way you were able to express your love through words. That's absolutely amazing. Your family is golden. Your family is golden for sure. And I'm so happy that you found the love that you prayed so hard for when you were little. I'm so happy that you did. I love it. Nami about to cry. My husband cheated. Any advice? Beat him the fuck up. Fuck, like that's, that's the end of that story. Beat him up. I told baby, like, do you, you do understand what would happen to you if you cheated on me? <laughs> He's like, what? Well, you do know that I'm going to physically make you feel the pain that I am feeling. Okay. Like, I'm pretty sure he think I be kidding. I'm almost positive he think I be playing with him. Just leave. Oh, I plan to do that too. While he's laying on the floor, crying. <laughs> I will not be the only person to cry myself to sleep tonight. I will not be crying alone tonight. I'm not going to do it. All right. Let's give this lady some advice. Girl, beat him up. I, 35 female, don't know if this is the appropriate place to say this or seek advice, but I would just see the outcome after I post. I'm not much of a Reddit fan, but my friend advised me to make this to make an account and make this to ask for advice. I found out my husband was cheating on me last year with my best friend. Damn. beat him up twice with my best friend that I knew from kindergarten it was the most heartbreaking thing ever because that same year I got pregnant with our second child so I felt betrayed that he did something like that especially with my friend she would come around the house and act normal for the whole time that they were messing around so where's she at because we could beat her up too let's create a line of motherfuckers we need to beat up because just go on and just make a list I stayed because I was pregnant and I didn't want all the stress on my baby. So I stayed and made it seem like I had my moments to cry without him finding out. So after that, I was just numb and mentally I was already checked out of that relationship. I started reading This Is How You Heal by Brianna Weist. 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 W-E-W-I-E-S-T. -E I highly recommend it for anyone that's going through the same that I'm going through. So if y'all going through something similar, it's a book called This Is How You Heal by Brianna Wiest. So yeah. Yesterday, it was my daughter's 12th birthday. So we took her out to eat to Red Lobster because baby girl loves seafood. Throughout the whole day, I was getting many looks from men and women because I wore a tight dress. I'm not going to act innocent and say I wasn't flirting with them as well because that would be a lot. I'll probably get hate for that. I admit I'm bi, so if that, so damn, so if I did hit it off a man or a woman, I really wouldn't care. The wife duties I would usually do for my husband, I stopped. I cooked enough food for the kids. My son is one, so he mostly eats small portions. I got upset because I didn't cook food for him, so he said that he'll starve. Are you guys believing this? A 43-year-old man can't cook for himself. I just laughed at him because I was sick and tired of him. I know I'm yapping my head off, but I just want to get everything off my chest and probably someone to talk to. Enough. Let him starve. Go. Thank you. Thank you. Let him starve. Let baby come home talking about I'm hungry. Why you didn't say that? Because I didn't. Well, I'm going to. OK. You have fun. I'm, don't come over here breathing on my food. But you go. You do that, bookie. You do that, bookie book. I'll be here. I don't fucking care. I'll go full Beauty and the Beast on his ass. Then fucking starve. <laughs> okay. 
that's fine. That's cool. Just going in. That's cool. Um. Anyway, questions about my ex friend will be answered. I know the day he told me he cheated on me. I don't know what came over me, but I just laughed like a crazy woman. I might be one. It was funny because I already knew and I just wanted to see if he had the balls to admit it himself. I told him I would smash my ex-friend's head, but I wasn't being serious, just trying to scare him. I don't do the violence thing, but I did want to slap her in the face. <laughs> violence thing. I do. I do. Sometimes. Hmm. I've been in contact with a lawyer to get my divorce papers, but I'm taking it step by step. When I flirt with other people, he gets mad. Would you guys call me the asshole if I said I like doing that? Girl, no. Nah. You're supposed to do everything that makes him mad. If he doesn't like to be woken up before 7 a.m., that's when you do your cleaning. You get up at 6 and you vacuum. If he hates the color orange, that is the only thing that's in your color wheel now. You only cook foods he don't like for you and the kids because y'all don't have a problem with it. You only wear clothes that he, you know he hates. Girl, that's what you're supposed to do. That's what you... Well, not, they got kids. Y'all was trying to be considered of the fuck. You guys are heathens. Wake up and vacuum at four. They got babies. <laughs> I'm trying to let the baby sleep until at least six. <laughs> vacuum the bedroom and start on his side. That's fucking diabolical. <laughs> you guys are evil. Y'all are evil. I was trying to, damn, I guess I was being too nice to cheat a cheat a pumpkin eater, huh? <laughs> I would have been, my bad. <laughs> Won't make that mistake again. Make it a game for the kids. <laughs> Mommy hit a sock somewhere in the house. The first person to find it gets ice cream for breakfast. <laughs> and it's under his pillow. But they gotta, you have to open up everything. I don't give a fuck. We gonna make a mess. That's fine. We just gonna make noise and turn on some music that's gonna get the kids hyped too. Yeah. <laughs> we just gonna be in there fucking shit up. <laughs> it would be time. To, that is the worst. Don't come here trying to wash the blankets and shit while I'm asleep. <laughs> Cause I'm not laying on the mattress. I'm not, I don't care how new and how, I'm not laying on the mattress. I'm not gonna do it. <sighs> Anywho, going back to the shit. Oh God. I only, I only make him angry to let him know what it feels like to be betrayed. And I know that sounds toxic and I would agree, but it seems to be working. And yes, this is a real, this is real. Nothing fake. I'm living in this bullshit reality. During breakfast, we say a few words because our daughter can understand when something is wrong between her parents. I'm trying to, I'm trying my best to keep calm. I'm embarrassed that I got cheated on and... And what will be more embarrassing is telling the whole family. If you guys would like to leave some advice on divorce, I would happily love it because I've never been through a divorce before. So I need to know what to do and what not to do. Sorry, I just wanted my, I just wanted to ramp my head off. I feel a weight being lifted off my shoulder after saying what needed to be said. I'm embarrassed by all of this, so I probably won't say anything else. You guys have you guys have me and my husband's link to the post. Thanks. You guys have me my damn have me link my husband to the damn. <laughs> you guys have me send my husband the link to this post. Thanks. I couldn't get it out. Not girl, not a pie. Not a pie. So her husband wrote a post and we're going to read it. The husband wrote a post. And we're going to read it. <laughs> All right. He, uh, he deleted everything. This was the update. And he deleted the update. So here's what this one says. This is not a joke, but the amount of hate that I'm getting is crazy. As a man, I admitted my wrongdoings and I know I did something bad. That's why I want to work on things with my wife, but she isn't paying attention to me. Yesterday, we went out for my, our daughter's birthday, and throughout the day, a bunch of men flirted with her, even women, because my wife is bi. She was wearing a tight body dress that showed off her curves and her big boobs. She's been wearing more revealing clothes after what I told her. It pissed me off. She was flirting with the man in my face, smiling and giggling, and when I told her not to do that, she just laughed again. Now my mind is thinking she'll sleep with someone else. <gasps> the horror! Oh my gosh. 
So that's the least of your worries. Literally. That is the least of your worries. My, my wife already knows the friend that I slept with and told me when she sees her, she's going to smash her wedding, her head, not her wed, her head into the wall, smiling while saying it. That's why I want to get couples counseling and I'm asking for advice, but you guys are just laughing at me. I'm getting threats in my chat like you guys are crazy. I'm trying to do what's right and make it better. Yes, I'm the asshole and yes, I'm a piece of shit, but I knew that. You guys are making it worse. I'm asking what I should do. What is strange to me is that every time she's on the phone, she goes into a separate room and she's been getting a call from a number I've never seen before. I don't know who it is. Leave your wife alone. Stop hanging off her coochie hairs. Damn. Leave her alone. Sir, you made your bed. Fucking lie in it. Fucking lie in it. I need, where my shaft stick at? Sir, you made your bed, my dear sir. These are the consequences of your action. <laughs> Play crime here, remember? That's, that's funny. Right? Give her everything that she wants. That's what you can do. Oh, I like those. Oh, I like those. I like that. Exactly. I like that. You're not allowed to cut her and then tell her how to bleed. Absolutely. Sir, you have already betrayed your marriage. There is no more marriage. You know that your wife is over it. She's done for. You said that. She's not even thinking about it. She won't entertain you trying to make it right. But yeah, so you don't get to fuck with her friend, her best friend, and then had the bitch smiling all in her face. Y'all was bold as fuck because the bitch was still coming to your house. No. Hell, howdy, man. Absolutely not, sir. Leave this woman the fuck alone. See, this is what I'm talking about. Y'all remember the story I posted yesterday about the lady whose husband won't, like keeps coming to her house for lunch and shit? Like, tell him to stop. <laughs> we didn't just jump him, sir. Move on. You cheated. She has moved on. Move on. Move on. Like, once a woman is no longer has checked out of the relationship, there's absolutely nothing you can do to get her back. When she was screaming and crying and begging and pleading for you to come around and pay attention and do the things that she wanted you to do, that's when you had your fighting chance. Now that she's over it, she's fucking over it. She's over it. She she doesn't care. There's literally nothing between heaven and hell you can offer her that would make her trust you again. And that's the big thing. Her trust in you is gone. You've lost it. It's gone. It's not coming back. Let it go. You got better chances of catching a fucking leprechaun than you do getting this woman to trust you again. Your focus should be on your fucking kids because that's about all you're going to have. That is about all you're going to fucking have. Thank you. All right. Well, the title of this story is you guys can go. My husband cheated and I need advice. You guys can go and talk to her and leave her some advice. If any of you guys have gone through a divorce and you could, you know, give her some things that you didn't think of that you were told. Go drop her a line. I, mean, I ain't never been divorced. So I feel like this comment section and this commentary and, you know, like it's limited on what I can say because I don't know through any type of experience about this. So I'm not going to speak on what I don't know. But if you guys have some advice instead of telling me here in the comments, go tell her. Go tell her. All right, y'all. I love you all. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me. Depending on how I feel tomorrow, I might go live. I don't know. I started this allergy medicine that be having me feel just drained all goddamn day. So yeah i'm so sorry you guys be back bye bye andy